1917 is not only a new World War I film, not only a new film to try the one continuous shot gimmick, but it's also the latest film from director Sam Mendes. And in this film, two British soldiers are sent from their 8th Battalion on a journey to the 2nd Battalion because they're about to go into a battle that is actually a trap laid out for them perfectly and they're unaware. And because obviously communication wasn't as advanced as it was back in World War I times, they have to walk all the way to the 2nd Battalion and deliver the message. And because their mode of transportation is very limited, they have to walk and be very cautious of what they do because anything could go wrong at any moment. I was really excited for this movie from the first trailer because the first trailer looked really intense. It looked like Sam Mendes was going to craft something really special, but then when the featurettes started coming out, talking about how they were going to try the one continuous shot gimmick, I was really really excited at that point because we've seen movies have like certain scenes that feel like it's one continuous shot we've seen movies like Birdman that do like the entire movie is like one continuous shot and then other movies that actually are like one take uh, but those are like usually very hard to find very obscure movies but this one having it set in World War One that was really interesting. All the things you have to manage to make that work. It seems like it could be daunting for anyone. Like picture me doing like school projects now and then I just I just get launched into making a one continuous shot feeling World War One film. I would feel so much pressure and 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 just so much just so much anxiety on, my, on how I would pull that off and that's just me. Sam Mendes is obviously a more professional filmmaker than me. He's made bigger movies but I can't imagine anyone not feeling at least a little scared going into a project like this, but I was really excited to see how he'd pull it off because he's a director I really admire. Skyfall is the movie they've decided to market this film uh, from the director of Skyfall in every trailer, and that's a great movie, obviously. Spectre they've decided to not include, even though that's a really a uh, big money-making movie, I guess, because not too many people like that one. But American Beauty and Road to Perdition are fantastic as well. I haven't seen uh, his other films yet, but those two in particular I really, really love, especially American Beauty. He, he is a wonderful filmmaker, so I was really excited to see what he and Roger Deakins will be able to create here, and it's marvelous. It is a definite technical achievement on every front. I really did adore this film, not just because of the cinematography, although that is a big reason to like it. Roger Deakins captures some wonderful images as the movie progresses, and everything is so smooth. Even when it has to get a little bit chaotic because there's like an action scene going on, you still have a firm grasp of what is happening in the scene. And when they do like kind of pass by an object or they move the camera in a certain way and you're kind of like, oh, that in my brain is kind of picking up that there might be a hidden cut in there, because everything is so smooth and because you can barely notice that anything is changing, it, it really does feel like there's a genuine good flow. So I was never kind of taken out by obvious hidden cuts. Nothing was really that obvious. But like I said in the beginning of the video, all the things that you have to manage while trying to do a one continuous shot kind of movie like this must have been incredibly daunting, yet they pulled it off very well. All of the locations in this movie never repeat as uh, uh, they mentioned in the featurette. They always go to new places as the movie progresses, and each one of them feels very lived in and torn down by war, and it feels like real places that you could actually go to. But what I really loved about all the locations they go to as well are all the smaller details that you can pick up on too, some of the more darker, disturbing smaller details that some filmmakers might not even uh, think about putting in, or because they're not as immersive as a movie like this, you won't get to see or experience the kind of images that you see. Like, because of how immersive this is, you really do feel like you are with these two characters, and when they're experiencing something, you're experiencing it too. It's like, if I had to describe the immersion, it's like you're playing Call of Duty if it was set in 1917, and you're not doing it POV, you're just doing it third person but you still feel like every single time the camera moves with these two guys, you feel like you are with them as it goes along. It's incredible how they're able to make you feel like you are interacting with this environment. It's an environment that is really scary. Uh, as soon as the movie kind of gets going, first 10 minutes they're already put on the mission, you really don't have any room to breathe at all because you are aware that at any moment something could go horribly wrong. This is wartime after all, so you are constantly on the edge because the the, these guys are nervous. They're not incredibly confident about what they're doing, but they got to do it. They have to do it for their army, but also for a, a personal drive as well. So you're able to buy into these characters as well as they go along. They have a very short amount of time to actually give you any character building or development. I thought these two characters, for the limited amount of chances that they have 
to flesh them out as characters, they did a pretty good job at that. Dean Charles Chapman does a really good job in this movie. Uh, he's the one who has a brother in the 2nd Battalion, so there's a personal drive to get to that. But George McKay, uh, he was in a movie in 2018 called Marrowbone, and I thought he was really great in that, and I'm so glad that he's in a bigger movie like this to get him more exposure, because he is wonderful in this movie as well. Uh, he's given a lot to do, a lot more than I expected, but he... He pulls it off very well. He comes across very genuine. And whenever he's scared, you're scared with him. Whenever he's in danger, you're fearing for him. But it's also wonderful to fear for yourself as well. There's one part in the movie where everything's kind of quiet, but you're not expecting anything to happen because you're already focused on a certain action that's going on. But then all of a sudden you hear a gunshot go off and there are people in my audience that actually kind of like went back a bit as well. And I was like, I, I kind of jumped because I wasn't expecting the sound effect, but to see other people like kind of like react physically like that was really quite impressive. And it's a really great testament to what Sam Mendes and Roger Deakins and everyone working behind this movie was able to accomplish. This movie isn't like a big war, like gunfights and like every single scene ducking for cover every minute of the movie kind of thing. It's really more so the atmosphere that they're able to build with their filmmaking that gives the tension and the stakes that you know that are at hand and the fact that they're doing stuff that if you were placed in that moment at that specific time, you probably wouldn't know what to do. You'd probably panic. So obviously there's great acting in this movie You've seen uh, Colin Firth and Benedict Cumberbatch in the trailers, but there's also a couple other celebrities that they get to play small roles. One in particular that they didn't show his face for a while, but as soon as he started talking, I was like, oh, that's that's that guy, and then it took a while to finally show his face, but when they did, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. So there, there's a couple surprises, uh, aside from Benedict and Colin, who are also obviously good, it's just that they all play smaller roles, but it's good for supporting the rest of this film that really does rely mostly on the filmmaking and the suspense created through that. But just because it is overly reliant on that doesn't mean that everything else about this movie is bad or, or, or to a surface level. Like, I thought the script was really good, and I thought what they did with the characters in these smaller moments that, although they are small in the movie, you still feel like you're getting to know these people, you still get a sense of who they are, so I thought that was a really great way of crafting their journey. The score by Thomas Newman is really fantastic. The Newman Bros, a Randy this year having Toy Story 4 and Marriage Story, which is mwah, beautiful, both of them, but Marriage Story especially. And then Thomas Newman, there are some orchestrations in here that are really strong and really powerful, where I was like, I was just, I, I wasn't like completely tuning out of the movie, but I was really focusing on the music in a lot of times. And I was just completely kind of whisked away by, like there, there's something really enchanting but haunting about the orchestrations in this movie and they accompany the scenes very well. I didn't think, it, uh, I, didn't, I didn't really think of it as distracting. I, I, I just thought they all flowed very nicely. This movie doesn't really let you breathe into like the last frame of this movie and even then your heart will still be pounding as you walk out of the theater and go home. I should know because I was doing that too because this movie is able to create a lot of great suspense it's a wonderfully made movie. Sam Mendes really knocked it out of the park with this. We all know Roger Deakins to be a fantastic cinematographer, and that, that obviously is not gone to waste with this movie. He really put a lot of his talents behind this, but the people that work behind the scenes, the set designers, the builders, uh, they did a fantastic job too. Everything feels authentic down to the costumes and the dirt on the ground and the certain things that you'll find on the ground too. It just, everything about this movie is a really great technical achievement, but it has a strong enough story and strong enough acting and characters to lift it up as well. I'm gonna give 1917 an A+. plus. I'm glad that I waited to release a list uh, because I didn't think it would be really complete without seeing this movie after I saw the trailers and all that, but uh, I'm really glad I waited because this is a fantastic movie that is one of my favorites of 2019, and I, I, I just, I can't wait to watch it again and experience that suspense all over again because I really do think it's gonna be one of those movies that although you know it's gonna happen and you've already seen it, it will still get you to start clenching up just about how much you did while you saw it in the theater. But please, try to go see it in a theater uh, right now. Uh, there was a lot of people in the theater, so I think this will do well at the box office, which is great, but if you're skeptical, just just go see it in a theater. Please go support this movie because it, it's one of a kind. It's a one of a kind experience that you should experience in the theater. But if you've seen 1917, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.